Yes, um, welcome you all. This is Hyper, and uh, uh, I'm taking you through the relationship between Solvija product KSP, the ionic product, and how these two connect to precipitation, saturation, and dissolution. So we shall be looking at how these two, subjective product and ionic product, connect with these others. It was examined in the of 2016 for Ugandan students. And the question was describing how KSP can be used to predict precipitation and all those. So now, basically, it is always very easy, but it can also be examined in analytical questions. So it's a matter of knowing what the question is interested in. So if we consider, I'm going to consider as pairingly soluble salt AX, BY. If you consider this pairing a soluble salt, before we had said that KSP of this pairing a soluble salt will be equal to the concentration of A power Y, sorry, the ion of A raised to the power X times the concentration of B, that is the X minus, raised to the power Y. Now, the ionic product will be the same. Uh, we shall say that ionic product is equals to the concentration of A, the ion of A per X, times the concentration of B per Y. Now, you realize that in each case, rather for these two, the expression of KSP and the expression of ionic product are the same. So uh, you realize that both the solubility and the KSP, rather both the solubility product and the ionic product have got the same solutions, rather the same expressions. Now, the difference is that a ionic product can be applicable to all types of solutions, all types of solutions. And this ionic product will always increase when the ionic or when the concentration of the ions increase, the ionic product will also be increasing. But we've said that this is applicable to all solutions. However, the solubility product KSP is only applicable to saturated solutions. And as we saw before the condition that makes it valid, the solution must be sparingly soluble. And basically, uh, the solution has to be saturated and it must occur at a constant temperature. So this one is only valid for sparingly, for sparingly soluble salts, yeah? So now, basically, we are going to find out that this is for sparingly soluble salts and this is for all solutions. Now, when the ionic product is less than solubility product, let me give a summary and that summary will enable us to tell what happens at what instance. So when the ionic product is, when ionic product is less than the solubility product, What happens is that more of the spelling is soluble salt, more of the sparingly more 
mob that's pairing with soluble salt uh, dissolves. Since the solution is unsaturated, so when the ionic product is less than the solvable product, the saturated solution is going to dissolve. But when they are equal, when ionic product is equal to KSP, the solubility product, then what will happen is that uh, no more of the sparing is soluble salt that will dissolve. When these two are equal, then it means that we have a saturated solution. So no more of the sparing is soluble salt or you can call it electrolyte, dissolves, no more dissolves. And this is since that solution is saturated. Since the solution is saturated. However, if the ionic product is greater than KSP, If the ionic product is greater than KSP, what does it mean? It means that the concentration of ions is higher than KSP. So we expect the excess of the ions to react so that we precipitate the sparing is soluble salt. So what happens is that if the ionic product is greater than KSP, or when the ionic product exceeds the solubility product, precipitation occurs. Precipitation occurs. Actually, one can say precipitation of a sparingly soluble salt kinds so uh, uh that is it that you can talk about now you can make a summary of what we've talked about we say that for ksp if it is greater than the ionic product the ionic product we have said that it is the concentration of a ion per x and the concentration of b per y if it is if the like sp is greater than this ionic product then solution is not saturated and being not saturated means that more of the salt or more of the electrolyte dissolves more of electrolyte dissolves. But if KSP is less than, when KSP is less than this ionic product, then we say that here precipitation occurs. But if KSP is equal to the ionic product, then the solution is, if they are equal, then the solution is saturated and no more of it, no more of the sparing soluble electrolyte will dissolve. So this one can be applied in some analytical questions. And I'm going to do one or two analytical questions. And I show you how it can be examined in that sense.
for example, a question can come and they ask you that, uh, when ammonia solution, let me put it up here, ammonia, is added to magnesium chloride, solution, a white precipitate. Insoluble in excess. Is formed. But. When the same solution. is added to calcium chloride. Solution, there is no observable change. So you can say explain the observation. So the logic behind this question is all about uh, solubility products. So one, I want you to note that uh, this magnesium hydroxide, or rather magnesium chloride, produces magne uh, magnesium ions. So the magnesium ions, well, uh, will react with the, the hydroxide ions from ammonia. And this will lead to formation of magnesium hydroxide. So basically your first statement before this equation, you'd write and say that magnesium ions react with hydroxide ions to form insoluble magnesium hydroxide. And this magnesium hydroxide formed is basic and therefore cannot react with excess, can react with excess hydroxide ions, yeah? Another thing is that ammonia being a weak base, it partially ionizes to, in water to form a few hydroxide ions. Being a weak base, it will partially ionize in water to form ammonium ions. And hydroxide ions. So now, since the concentration of hydroxide formed from the weak base is low for the ionic product of calcium, hydroxide to exceed its solubility, therefore precipitation will occur. So the main thing here is that uh, uh, you first talk about magnesium ions here reacting with hydroxide ions from aqueous ammonia to precipitate magnesium hydroxide. And you also need to tell us that this magnesium hydroxide formed is basic because of the hydroxide ions and therefore cannot react with excess of the alkali, excess of the ammonia solution. Then now, you talk about ammonia being a weak base that pressurizes in water to produce a few hydroxide ions. And the concentration of hydroxide ions being low, it means that the ionic product of calcium hydroxide, the ionic product of this calcium hydroxide uh, cannot be exceeded because uh, because of the hydroxide ions concentration, which is very low. So it means that if you were to form the hydroxide ions, or if you were to form the calcium hydroxide, since you're using the weak ionization, the slow ionization of ammonia, you're producing a few hydroxide ions, which will make the ionic product with the calcium hydroxide that would be formed not to be exceeded. And if the ionic product is not exceeded, then there is no precipitation that occurs. 
So such questions come in analytical, uh, they come as analytical questions, but it's a matter of you realizing them. Uh, I repeat, we say that magnesium ions react with hydroxide ions from ammonia to form magnesium hydroxide. This magnesium hydroxide is a precipitate and being basic, it cannot react with any of the hydroxide ions. So we shall form a precipitate here. But then since the ammonia solution undergoes ionization in water to form ammonium ions and a few hydroxide ions, these few hydroxide ions make the ionic product of the wood have been performed calcium hydroxide below. And since the ionic product cannot be exceeded, yeah, it means that uh, uh, precipitation does not occur. So there is no observable change. Yeah, so uh, if uh, for the case of inorganic, I record much more of this work. So you relax, actually, to all viewers. Uh, I'm going to be recording all questions to do with the trends in inorganic, all trends questions. For the case of inorganic, I will summarize as much as I can. Then now from here, I'm going to complete thermal chemistry or the energetics. So uh, let's always make sure that we uh, refer to our colleagues this channel because it can be hopeful as far as exams. For now, let me wish you the best. I'm going to record thermal chemistry so that we keep the vibe high. I wish you the best. See you. Mm -hmm.